What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk about creating and saving a custom material library in SketchUp. We've been talking a lot about working with different materials and I wanted to teach you how to kind of organize those things so that you can access them in the future instead of creating new materials every time you need them. And before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give a real start to finish training for for SketchUp. So we cover everything from the basics all the way through to uh, more advanced topics, all the way into photorealistic rendering, that sort of thing. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to get more in-depth with your SketchUp training, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, you need to understand the nature of materials within SketchUp because there's a little bit of confusion in here. So the first thing you need to know is that the the images themselves are not textures. So let's say for example that I was to, we'll go ahead and pull up my materials folder and let's say I was to go in and I was to look for a metal panel material that I have in this folder. So you can see how I have multiple different images in here. And uh, in this case, these are images that I've downloaded that are different maps for V-Ray and everything else. But you can see how there's like an image in here that's gonna get tiled over and over again to create the material. That being said, this image is not the SketchUp material. SketchUp creates its own material file that actually contains all the information it needs to put a material like this within SketchUp. And so, like, let's say, for example, that I was to back up a little bit and I was to look inside this folder. You'll notice that what I have in here is I have an actual metal panel SketchUp material file. So that's an actual file created by SketchUp based on that image. And so in order to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and create a custom texture real quick. So in order to create a custom texture, you're going to go over to the materials section of your tray. You're going to click the little button right here. So when you click on that, that's going to pop up a little pane where you can create your own material. And I will link to a video where I do this a little bit more in depth. But in this case, we're just going to create a material using a texture image. And you're going to do this by clicking on the little folder. So what I've done is I've bookmarked in my quick access where my materials folder is. I've also bookmarked my plugins folder so that when I need to get in there and adjust those things quickly, I can do that. And you can save these to your quick access section in Windows by navigating to a location and then coming over to quick access and right clicking and clicking pin current folder to quick access. Then it'll show up on this list and you can click on it and get to it really quickly. But in this case, uh, this is gonna be a material I downloaded from polygon.com. I will link to a video about textures from polygon.com. This can really work with any images from images that you take to you can download things from like SketchUp Texture Club or CG textures, textures.com. There's a lot of different places you can get these. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring in a plaster material. And if you remember, we're just selecting the image file that's gonna get tiled to create this material. So in this case, we're gonna select this image right here and you can see how that, that gets brought in. And so to start off, let's go ahead and click OK and let's just apply that to a face. So when I come in here and I create a very simple face, I'm gonna apply this material. And what you're gonna notice is that's gonna come in tiled because it's uh, smaller. So some materials aren't scaled the way that they need to be within SketchUp. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna adjust the sizing on this from one foot by one foot to 10 foot by 10 foot. And you can see how that gets us a much clearer view of this material. And so this is a basic material that we've created using a texture image. Now we're gonna save that. So I'm gonna take this material and in this case, I'm gonna call it Polygon plaster. In fact, I'm going to call it Polygon Plaster 17, just because that's the name of the, the file in here, and I want to keep that kind of organized so I have an idea. You can really name these however you want. In this case, I'm trying to name them based on where they're from, because I know that a texture from Polygon is going to be super high resolution, so when I bring that in, I just need to be mindful of that so I don't slow my model down. Um, you can label these high res plaster. You can really label these whatever you want to label them. It's just whatever you need to do in order to stay organized. 
So once you do that, you're going to go over to the selection section and you're going to look for that material you created in the in model section. So in this case, that's showing up right here. And what I want to do is I want to save that as a SketchUp material so I can access it later. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that material and I'm going to go down to save as. That's going to allow me to save that somewhere. And in this case, I'm keeping my custom materials in my SketchUp folder where my plugins are located. So if I was to go back and click on SketchUp, you can see how this is where I keep different templates and styles and plugins. Well, I'm also going to keep my materials in here. So in this case, I'm going to go find the folder that I want to put this in. And in this case, I'm just going to create a folder and call it something like plaster and drywall or something like that. Again, a lot of this is just how you're going to keep organized. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and save this in the plaster and drywall folder. I'm going to click save. Now, if I was to go into the plaster and drywall folder, you can see how this plaster 17 is now in there as a SketchUp material. So now we can open and access this through the materials editor. That's how you would create a material and then you would organize that by folders however you want it to go. Well now what we need to do is we need to bring this in as a collection. So if you remember SketchUp has a bunch of built-in collections right now. So asphalt and concrete, all of these different things are SketchUp's built-in collections. I'm going to bring this in as its own collection. And so in this case in order to do that, we're going to click on this little arrow and I'm going to move this over because this kind of like strays into my other monitor. So we'll bring this to about right here and we're going to click this drop down and you're going to find an option in here for open or create a collection. And so when you open that up, you can see how this allows you to select a folder. Well, in this case, I have my materials folder and right now I have a polygon folder when I start downloading things from other websites or maybe if I bring in lower resolution textures I will have other folders in here as well. But in this case what I want to do is I want to bring in the polygon folder that has a bunch of my other textures in here. So to start off you can either just click on this folder or you can double click and then not select anything else and you can click select folder. What that's going to do is that's going to bring that in down here below the line. And so when it's below the line, you can see how now anything that's contained inside that folder is going to show up in here. So for example, if I was to look, this series of folders lines up with this series of folders. So really anything that's in that polygon folder is going to show up inside here. And not all of these right now have SketchUp textures associated with them yet, like the nature folder doesn't. But in this case, like for example, where our plaster and drywall was, you can see how that plaster material is going to show up in there. And so I have other materials in here as well. So if I go to like the uh, like the fabric section, I have a couple materials in here as well. And you're going to notice these have different uh, other folders inside of them. The reason for that is because these are also materials for rendering and so all of the images and stuff associated with that I'm also storing in here. You can kind of ignore that at this point. Um, we're going to focus on the materials themselves. If you don't like this, you can keep those folders somewhere else. Again, it's just a question of how you organize things in Windows Explorer. But you can see how I can select any of these materials and I can apply them to different faces within my model really quickly. And so from here, one thing I would recommend is when you have a folder like this that you're going to access a lot, I would recommend that you add it to your favorites. And honestly, this seems to work about the same as loading the extensions um, within SketchUp. Sometimes it seems to remember, sometimes it doesn't. So in this case, the first thing I would recommend is whatever folder you're keeping your custom materials in, I'd recommend you save that as a favorite. And so in this case for me, that would be my overall materials folder in here. And you would just click this little drop down and you would go down and you would click add collection to favorites and you would select that folder. So in this case, that would be my materials folder. So what that allows you to do is then anything inside this uh, 
folder, you can now go edit, fly around, anything you really want. So that, that kind of gives you like a portal into your, mater your custom materials folder itself. Now I could also come in here and let's say I was to use something else like the polygon folder a lot, I could also add that to my favorites. I believe what that's supposed to mean is whenever you open SketchUp, that's always going to open up. That's not always the case, but um, I'd recommend going ahead and adding that collection to your favorites. And then, and then whenever you open up SketchUp, those folders are going to show up below the line here. But if for whatever reason they don't, just do the same thing where you just open or create a collection. You go find the folder where the collection is that you want and just click select folder. So one other thing you could do in this case, I've seen some people do this. I don't because my internet connection isn't very good at home, but um, you can also create like a Dropbox folder. So if you want to access this from multiple different computers, you could create a Dropbox folder with your materials in it and you could link to that. If you if you ever use Dropbox, you can actually navigate to those folders like you would anything in Windows Explorer. So I will say from here on out, this is really just a question of the way that you organize things within Windows Explorer and how you organize your folders. This is just a window into the folders that you've created for your organization. So I'm also gonna try to create a video on uh, doing this with V-Ray materials and keeping those organized on my other channel, The Rendering Essentials. So make sure you subscribe over there to uh, check that video out when it comes out. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is this how you're organizing your materials? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.